So <laughs> the, the question was to explain the uncertainty principle and, and how that affects things. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll take a swing at that. <laughs> uh, well, the uncertainty principle, um, just to, to lay the groundwork, that's uh, basically the Heisenberg uncertainty principle says that you know, at, at these very small scales, we cannot know both the position of a particle and its momentum, its speed, to infinite precision simultaneously. Basically, we, we can't know precisely where a particle is and exactly how fast it's moving simultaneously. We, have, we, can, we can know one of them really well and the other not so well, or we can, we can trade them off a bit and know both of them fairly well. Um, I guess how this might impact the Big Bang is, is uh, actually, I'm not entirely sure. I guess the way I would sort of think about it is maybe not so much as an uncertainty principle problem, but we get these things, these fluctuations in the vacuum, right, that occasionally, you know, they lead to particles and antiparticles. So um, what could have happened here with the Big Bang is we have one of these big fluctuations at the very beginning that's sort of a consequence of uncertainty principle. That's uncertainty in energy and time. And that gets the whole show going, right? It's, it's, there's enough energy in there in this fluctuation to, to start, the, start the process. And, uh, and, it, and it goes forth from there. Sort of the, the mystery of all this is once you do this, once you create these particles in this way, you should have equal numbers of particles and their antiparticles. Uh, but what we observe, thankfully, is that uh, basically all the matter we observe is, is normal matter. It's not antimatter. If it, if we had, so there's a puzzle there. How do we wind up with more matter and less antimatter so that we don't, so we could actually be here? If there was equal amounts, then we all would have disappeared in flashes of light by now. So uh, I, I don't know if I addressed the question directly or not, but I, I tried to obfuscate it enough that I gave you interesting <laughs> stuff. Um. Mark or Scott, do you all want to add to that at all? Well, I, I could say something additional um, because the Heisenberg uncertainty principle actually has some remarkable consequences for black holes. Not, not necessarily the Big Bang, but black holes. And uh, this is actually one of the reasons why Stephen Hawking is a famous person. is because he, he realized that black holes aren't actually black. They can actually emit stuff. So um, if you have a black hole... And just outside the black hole, you get one of these fluctuations because of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. One of the particles falls into the black hole, so we can no longer escape. Nothing can escape a black hole. But the other one doesn't fall in, which means that some energy has to come from the black hole to, get to make that particle real, to, to give that particle mass. That's actually the black hole actually loses mass. It loses energy. Energy and mass, the same thing, e equals mc squared. So black holes do actually have some kind of background radiation. Uh, and it's, uh, it's called Hawking radiation after Stephen Hawking who first realized this. Question, yes. 